Mina, Gonbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with more First Chronicles 23. Uh, two for the price of one today. Of course, this is primarily being because I didn't upload yesterday like a doof. So I'm uploading two videos today, and I just... This second message just kind of came to me as I was mulling over the first message in my mind. And I'm like, you know, that's really solid. I think this chapter is going to be a two-for-one sale today. Uh, free of charge, of course, for you beautiful viewers. All you got to do is put up with a little bit of an ad somewhere near the beginning of this video, and there you go. And ho I'll say, and hopefully it won't be completely free, because hopefully I'll get a little something from it. Being completely honest, at least I'm not trying to silently, quietly take your money. I'm like, yeah, I'm in this YouTube thing, and I hope some money comes out of it. I'm being complete, straight, completely straightforward with you right from the get-go. So, <laughs> please don't click away from the video. <laughs> please, please hang in there. The message and the word is coming. First Chronicles, chapter 23, and we're going to start at verse 27 here. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from twenty years old and above, because their duty was to help the sons of Aaron in the service of the house of the Lord, in the courts and in the chambers, in the purifying of all holy things, and the work of the service of the house of God, both with the showbread and the fine flour for the grain offering, with the unleavened cakes and what is baked in the pan, with what is mixed and with all kinds of measures and sizes, to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, and likewise at evening, and in every presentation of a burnt offering to the Lord on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the set feasts, by number according to the ordinance governing them, regularly before the Lord, and that they should attend to the needs of the tabernacle of meeting, the needs of the holy place, and the needs of the sons of Aaron their brethren, in the work of the house of the Lord. You don't hear too many sermons dealing with the quote-unquote dry stuff here in the scriptures. And I'm not here to give you some allegory on what those things mean, even though it is all a foreshadowing and a type of things that Jesus talked about in the New Testament, the things that he does as our heavenly high priest in the tabernacle of heaven. Rather, this is more or less about the Levites themselves. Uh, and again, it kind of coattails the first message today. It made me think, so like you have your, I mean, the first message I talked about choices. And, you know, like, which of the jobs I would prefer. But when I thought about that, I also thought, you know, if you were born a Levite, you weren't really going to go outside of your territory and, you know, be a blacksmith or a gardener or a farmer or a hunter or whatever various assortment of jobs there were to be had in Old Testament Israel. No, you were a Levite. Therefore... If you, you were, if you were born um, from the lineage of Aaron, you were a priest. If you were simply born of the, the greater, broader lineage of Levi, the son of Israel, then you ministered to your brethren, the sons of Aaron, the priests, and you helped with the work of the Lord. There were a few things, as I mentioned in the first video. By all means, check it out if you're interested in my thoughts on that and my thoughts on choosing what you want to do with your life. At the same time, your choices were incredibly narrow. You were either a part of the priesthood or you were ministering to the priesthood if you were a Levite. You were born into your position. I, I think of, and I'm not necessarily saying, you know, we should adopt a system where when you're born, you know from the get-go what you're going to do. I'm not necessarily advocating that. I would also say, is it really a bad thing? Well, in the case of the Levites, it wasn't a bad thing. It's like, like I said in the first video, it's better to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than a, than a thousand days um, in the tents of the wicked. I'd rather be outside patrolling in the cold rain than being, you know, lavishly, you know, just, um, you know, uh, daintied upon? Is that a word? It is now. Uh, by, you know, a bunch of wicked people. I'd rather be out in the cold serving God than be comfortable in the tents of the wicked. And... So while being, you know, while you're being born of this, like, well, I have to serve the Lord for the rest of my life. That sucks. Well, to me, it doesn't. I'm a fan of Jesus. I'm a fan of God. So that's fine. But the number of things you can do as a Levite was incredibly, incredibly small. And it's like you were born knowing your purpose in life. Like literally, like the thing you're going to do with your life, your career. Um, definitely your prospects of uh, more than, well, priests more so than Levites in general, but your prospects of who you're going to marry. Narrowed down quite a bit, not to mention, so I don't know what the culture of Israel is at that time. I don't think they had prearranged marriages, but they might have. I just Some of the laws I read, it's kind of like, there seemed to, just judging by those laws, it seemed that there was a little bit more freedom in marriage. 
Of course, back then and even in some countries today, prearranged marriages from the time you're born, like, okay, I had a boy, you had a girl, hey, let's hook them up, that's a great idea. Keep our families intact over the next generation. Thumbs up. So theoretically, you could literally, the two most important decisions in your life, aside from the God you're going to worship, well, then again, if you were born in Israel in general, that was pretty much, for the most part, determined. You've got your career and possibly even your marriage just laid out for you. I see so many people struggle with that, and then I think to myself, isn't it? I can see kind of the benefit of being born with your career just already laid out for you. You don't have to, you can be raised with a very set purpose with um, some very strict standards. You don't really need to waver outside of that because this is what you're going to be doing with your life. You have a very specific education, a very specific goal, and very specific work and tasks that are expected of you. Now, my thought on that is I really don't find it the most appealing of systems, whereas I can see the, it, the advantage of it. You have this to do at the same time. When you're born, like, here I am in the United States, and it's kind of like, okay, find your way. It can be a bit confusing, and here I am, you know, uh, you know trying to find new things to do, trying to broaden my perspective, but that's kind of exactly the point. I'm not limited to just one thing, or how many things, that, things were mentioned earlier in the chapter? Four or five things? I'm not limited to that. There are so many things I can try, and so many things that I can learn, especially with um, you know, education in America, and heck, YouTube, and the interwebs. There is so much that can be learned, and so much that can be gathered, and there's really not an age at which you have to stop learning, only if you choose to. You can always keep forging ahead and making a new path for yourself. And while it's harder, because you're not so limited and narrowed in. At the same time, there's a lot more freedom and a lot more flexibility. And again, part of me is just like, I, I like knowing exactly where I'm going. I like the type of video games I like to play. I like those old school linear games where you start at level 1, 1, you end at level 8, 4, not you start at Firelink Shrine, and now where in the world do I go from here? Dark Souls reference for those of you who do not know. Not linear at all, at least not Dark Souls 1. And I prefer the linear approach because I know what's ahead of me, I know what's expected of me, I study it, I refine it, I specify it, I'm good to go. But I wasn't born a Levite. I was born an American citizen in the 20th century. I was born in 1980. I'm old. So I have to look at a lot of options. I've got to make my best choices with my current abilities and go down that road. And I think it's better because there are more options, because I am more free to do what I think the Lord wants me to do and, quite frankly, what I want to do. It's nice that I get to choose what I do. I really like that. Now that the Lord doesn't tell me some very specific things He wants me to do, He does. And I need to do those things that He tells me to do and keep those things in mind. And some of those things really do line up with the things I love. Some of them not so much. But there's still that freedom to go out, to be myself, um, and to a large degree to discover who I am. I'm not just a Levite ministering to the priests. I'm Brandon. I'm an American. And I define myself. I personally think that's really cool. Although, once again, I do see there are a few layers of me that see the appeal of just that one, like here's the one focus, here's the one goal. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, what you think of this and the system that was there back then. I'm not going to say it was wrong. The Lord himself instituted it. I just kind of like the new covenant and the new rules a bit better. Uh, I, I think it is like version 2.0, new and improved. I think um, I think the tabernacle and the temple and the, and the priesthood system were great for the time that they were in. I think um, it was wonderful to have that focus and that dedication right there. I also think it's great that nowadays... Uh, we choose where we go. We choose what we do. I really, I like that. Looking at the two systems, I like what we have nowadays. So let me, so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.